is Andreas Pokulture Guide. Today is the latest Andreas Pokulture versus Magic slash view, and it's on the 30th anniversary of Batman Mass Battleship. Now, on December 25th, 1993, Batman the Mask of Phantasm premiere. Before Christopher Nolan's trilogy, the only movie that took Batman seriously was a cartoon. Originally a direct to video release, Warner Brothers Admiration rushed Batman Max of the Phantasm into theaters 25 years ago. This month, December 25th, as I stated, 1993. Now, created by the Emmy Award winning team behind Batman the Anime series, this feature length Emanation film was thrown into theaters during the 1993 Christmas season, alongside the heavyweight films like Chandler's List, Philadelphia, and of course, unfortunately, Mass Defense Vincent premiere, which didn't do well and unfortunately flopped. But however, it was well received critically with critics like Roger Eager and Gene Sisko praised the 1994 release. Mass of the Fantasm exists as an overlooked stop gap between the Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher line magic entries, particularly the 1992 Batman Returns and 1995 Batman Forever. However, Mass of the Fantasm did what Burton and Schumacher couldn't give us during that time was the Carabell Bat. Until the, oh, the odds, the before the Dark Knight trilogy or Bat leads the Batman, Mass of the Fantasm was the only Batman movie that made Batman the subject of this film, not as a assessor. Now, directed by Eric Vernagosi and Bruce W. Tim, or Bruce Tim for short, from a story penned by the Amazon series Red, Alan Burnett, or N. Paul Dean, Mass of the Phantasm shows the Dark Knight investigating another mass vigilante named the Phantasm. The new presence appears in a cloud of smoke with a blade or a fist. Attacking Gotham City's moss, moss uh, gang scares at the same time. Wayne's old play Andrea Bulma has returned as well, suspiciously, while Phantasm is attacking. Through the film, they are style flashbacks. Mass of the Phantasm uh, presents a firm loose Wayne, reckoning with his past, while facing a blinded future as Batman. While other Batman films flirt with Wayne's haunted past, this is the main focus of the movie. Films, plot, and access to fantasy. Not only did Wayne lose his parents at an age, he also lost the love of his life. His only, um, some balance of numbers in four months. The audience is found giving displays of the, his anger, guilt, and disappointment. In the midst of making another challenging decision, Wayne stares at his parents Portrait in his mind, uh, manner and wondering if he reconnected with Barbara. In flashbacks, Wayne visits his parents' grave, seeking advice about his love for Bob, and later asking permission to become Bat. Then, the movie also shows Wayne's difficult transition into a superhero, a man who, while listening, fights crime, be it in his sky mask or blue sweatshirt. Becomes Batman. At the DC sequence, we see Wayne bloody and badging and bruised, which felt like first at the time. Even after he has become the big vigilante, Wayne perks himself atop of the skyscraper as Batman while in the costume. Wayne is preoccupied uh, with the past that he spies out. He spies on Barlon going on the date with the cons councilman slash club Arthur Reeves. The ring pours as Batman. Grimace and focus his bon his his binoculars on these and Barman, sharing remote and remote. These are the types of details were never delivered in Batman movies until Batman begins. Now, as I said before, unlike every light action movie, Bat Max of the Phantom runs under 80 minutes rather than stretching out the movie over two hours. It ex excels as a lesson in tight storytelling, as Cisco noted in his review. Every image counts. Each scene moves the story along at a rapid pace. There are no laws or dull moments. Just as soon as the Phantasm is introduced, taking out a crime boss, Chucky Saul, film moves to leave Zianni for Batman's head and then Wayne hearing a Barman's return. I highly recommend watching Mask of the Phantasm. It's a great, excellent Batman. It's one of my top 
Fahari, uh, Batman fails a lot. He's number four after the Batman, Lego Batman, the end of Dark Knight. Like Bruce Wayne, DC is constantly working with his past mistakes, trying to force a new future. If DC next move is to brush the animation feature out to the beers, no matter how great it is, it might take another 25 years for the audience to come around. With regards to the mass of fantasy, it's a shame it took so long because in the 90s, it was the only bad movie that mattered. So, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this review of Batman Mass of Fantasm. And there's more to come soon in 2024. As is, ciao.